the, the Whiskey Report has been doing extensive uh, coverage of this issue. We are back with more on Newstalk Saga 960, the Mark Petrona show, the morning, the first inaugural show, really, of, uh, of this morning shift. And I'm happy to be here and so glad that you could tune in. Miles Kristen joining us from the Madison, Wisconsin area, where he took part in a protest dressed as Santa Claus. I mean, I'm glad you didn't get beaten up because uh, you show up at a protest and some of these people are violent. I mean, let's face it. Were you. There was a uh, man, there was a pro Israel. Jewish man in Los Angeles who showed up to one of these events and he got smacked with a megaphone and fell and died. And I believe it was actually a uh, professor uh, from the local university there who has been now charged in some sort of, um, I think they can't, I think they charged him with like manslaughter when it's like, well, you did smack a man and he died. I mean, there's, there should be a higher charge than than just a, you know, than a um, manslaughter. But, you know, and that story has gotten very little coverage nationally. And, and you look at, like, the horrific thing that happened out the side of the Sydney Opera House with uh, people chanting, you know, I don't even want to repeat it, but it was, you know, gas, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I mean, it was horrible. You have the situation in Russia where they they tried to stop people uh, Israelis from uh, Israel coming to Russia. They tried to stop them from getting off the plane in 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 Russia. You've seen these horrific displays of anti-Semitism across the world, and in the United States, I mean, what you've seen on college campuses and these incidences across the country, they're being so greatly ignored. And and what just blows my mind is you've got this organization the Party for Socialism and Liberation. This is the same group that advocated for releasing of all prisoners from all the jails during COVID because they were vulnerable people. And it was like, okay, you're not just talking nonviolent drug offenders. You're you're talking about rapists and murderers and so forth, but you want them released from the jail because of COVID. That same organization has been, you know, involved in all these school board meetings in Madison for, for, many years now, and they work hand in hand with these nonprofit organizations that are, I mean, the three groups work together and these nonprofit groups get millions and millions and millions of dollars from the city and the county and the federal government, and then are, you know, taking money and, and, and it's very questionable, very, very questionable about how the money is being spent or where it's being spent. And so this PSL, this Party for Socialism and Liberation is greatly involved and, and has a great influence on how tax dollars is being spent. And they have openly support Hamas and said ridiculously insane things. And it's like I was saying to someone earlier today, it's like, you know, you make these they make these connections between Trump and I'm not you know, I'm not a Trump supporter, but they make these like wild, crazy connections between Trump and like, you know, oh, Trump met with somebody who met with somebody who met with somebody, you know, playing, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon with Trump on everything. But it's like you can clear cut, say, OK, this group organized today's rally and they support Hamas and the media doesn't want to make that connection in here in town. And all these people go to this event. And I'm sure a lot of the people that went to today's uh, protest event were there for legitimate reasons. But some of them were very hateful and obscene. And I'm sure the Antifa people were there in their pajamas playing ninja or whatever they do. And, you know, it's just Madison has completely lost its mind and every time i say like this is the most insane madison can get they come up with something far crazier 